Nikifurushi cha super halo kutoka hal hotel. Piga nyota moja nne nane nyota sita sita alama ya reli. Chagua namba mbili super halo. Hal hotel pamoja katika ubora. Hyde is an international company. Um, it has over 700 hotels worldwide. Um, Hyde's looking at um, opportunities in, in Africa. We're opening up another hotel in Ethiopia this year. As we said, we'll open up another hotel in Tanzania um, early next year. So we see Tanzania as a, as a good growth area. There's a lot, of, a lot of opportunities here. Tanzania is getting very popular with the Europeans and American market far as the um, um, Zanzibar and far as the safaris go. So we, we're very big in America. Most of our hotels are in the USA. So we can help capture that American market and bring it to Tanzania. You know, the price we're offering this year is actually cheaper than what we're offered in 16. Depends on when the business, when business is quieter, we offer a cheaper room, you know. You can get rooms from $200 or you can get the same room for $400 depending on how busy we are at that particular time. It's like when you fly. If you book early and you arrange it early, you don't pay a lot. If you book the last minute to fly anywhere, it costs you a fortune. We think any, anything to growth with business is really important, and especially the mid-sized um, businesses in Dar es Salaam. Um, as you know, business is not progressing at, at any great pace right now, so anything we can do to help to motivate it, to get, encourage people, to keep people employed, I think is very important. Employment, as you know, in any country is really important. It, it uh, allows people to eat, allows people to progress, allows the country to grow. So whatever we can do to help in this process, we're very keen to be involved. Why now? Well, because it's the perfect time to get involved, you know. Hyde's always been involved where um, the owner company, ASB, has had this hotel for uh, 13 years here in um, Kilimanjaro and um, Hyde's been running it for about six years, so we're very, um, very keen and hopefully next year we'll do the same thing as well, we'll get involved. If you look at the IT business, what's out, out there now, they, they employ very, very little people and so the mid-sized businesses will employ a lot of people, they have a lot of good skills, they will allow people to develop as well. Also helps with education levels as well within those companies. It encourages people to go to school to get university degrees so they can actually be directors and run have senior roles in, in these mid-sized companies. For these, these companies, who they're employing is really important. If they employ the right people, if they do their marketing in the right areas, and obviously they need to open up in areas where they're, they're needed. You know, there's no point opening up a business in any market where they're not, not required. They need to do their market research before to see whether there's a market for what their services, what their goods are, etc. You can't just open up any business and think it's going to work. You know, if you can't open up a fish and chip shops if people in that area don't eat fish and chips. You can't open up a bookshop if people don't want to read books so often. So you have to look at the market. These mid-sized companies need to look at the market, see where their niche, niche area is and then go for it and not be happy with, with just being semi-successful. They've got to be, really thrive to be very successful. But what we're doing to sponsor this event is, is part of it and we will see in the future what other areas we can help. We try and mentor um, people to do business too. We see opportunities not only in Dar es Salaam but in, in Doma. We see opportunities there for young people to set up businesses there because that's a growing city. And you know the best, best place to set up businesses where there's going to be a need for different services and goods. And a dorm is a good example of that. There's going to be a lot of need for services and goods in that area. I would advise anybody who wants to set up a business is to go and look at a dorm and see what, see what opportunities there is to, to do in a dorm. There's a lot of interest in hospitality. There's a need for good restaurants, hotels, um, different size of, a, of accommodation, tour, car companies, um, even clothing companies there. There's no, there's no real big city um, infrastructure there as yet, so there's got an opportunity for, for builders, plumbers, electricians, all these, all these things were needed and there's a really strong demand there for it. For support then we can offer them advice on, on marketing, entrepreneurial, um, 
on marketing, being entrepreneurial, how they can stretch into different markets, how they should act in different markets as well, because if you look at your biggest trading market here, market here it's Kenya. Kenya has uh, the biggest investment in uh, for foreign companies, but also the um, the countries countries like UAE, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia who really need a lot of um, products from outside their country. They can't produce a lot of products because they don't have the water and wood. Well, your country has a lot of wood; it has the accessible to grow products really well. So there's a lot of really good markets out there for the agricultural market beef, chicken, etc. We're hoping that we're helping actually the companies. We're hoping that we're, we, we can help these mid-sized companies grow. We're hoping that people will come interested in their, in their companies because the Hyatt is the, is the leading five-star hotel in Dar es Salaam. So you, you see the major event. We just had the UN Women's, Women's Conference just here. So most of the profile um, meetings, um, conferences are all held in Hyatt. So, this will give the companies an opportunity to showcase what they can do in a five-star deluxe hotel. Like any, any companies, they, they can get information from it. They're, they can share experiences. They can look at best practices with the other, other companies. They can talk amongst themselves and see what companies are doing well, what, what markets are opening, what can be successful for them. Not all of these companies are going to be successful but they can learn from the more successful companies out of those top 100. And it's always good to bring these companies together to talk and brainstorm with themselves so they can look at ideas, discuss ideas, look at new trends, look at these kind of things, what is, what is happening in their, in their markets. Because it's important that it's not only, um, not only looking at um, the TV side or the publicity side, but also brainstorming together, look at opportunities where they can work together as well. We use a lot of mid-sized companies for our products, whether they're um, the fish companies, whether they're where we get our beef from, our tea, our coffee, our coffee from, so from suppliers. We use a lot of our suppliers at mid-sized mid -size companies, whether they're people who do the bagolas, whether they're a gardening company, outsourcing companies. So we tend to use, and a lot of the companies here in Dar es Salaam tend to be mid-sized mid -size companies. So we tend to use them a lot when we're, um, when we're looking for uh, getting quotes from business, when we're doing business, we tend to use those companies a lot. Yeah, always to, to look at different opportunities. No, don't don't stick with the old ways. Look at new ways. Look at new ways of doing of doing business. And on and obviously the new way of doing business nowadays is think everything's online. You know, everything is social media. The telephone now, the smartphone is controlling everything now. It controls money, payment of money. People are booking their restaurants. They're booking their accommodation. Booking their Airfares, buying cars, transferring money around to different countries to within themselves is the smartphone. So look at opportunities where they can tie their business into um, apps, using for the looking for the smartphone, looking for new opportunities. What's happening in the in the marketplace? Looking at areas what are growing. You know, the growing areas right now is Zanzibar is growing, Adoma is growing, for, especially for infrastructure. Zanzibar is growing on the tourist stage. They they really they've met their their goals already for the next two years as far as tourists going in there. Great opportunities in Zanzibar, great opportunities in Adolma for infrastructure. So looking at different ways, different looking at different trends, looking where the, where the business is moving to. I've worked into like 15 different countries around the world, so I've got vast experience. I've opened up five hotels, so I've had a lot, lot of experiences with um, opening up business, look at entrepreneurial business, getting small business in to work with us closely. Um, we're getting mid-sized businesses to work with us because any a big hotel like ours needs a lot of partners to work. It won't be successful if you just do it yourself. So you need everything from um, people who supply you with um, sheets, towels, um, everything from tomatoes to meat to chicken, uniforms, pens, papers, things being printed, everything that we hotels consume a lot of products from mid-sized companies. So what I'm saying is for the so you learned a lot from that. And so there's opportunities for companies to, um, to also grow with, with, when new businesses open to, or when new opportunities are raised, such as Adoma or, or Zanzibar, new growth areas. I would feel that these companies should, should be a, more, a little bit more aggressive in what they're doing, you know, because I don't see any salespeople coming to visit us 
from the mid-sized companies. I don't see them coming and knocking on our doors. I don't see them coming with sending emails and and coming to talk to us about their products. You know, the ones who come and talk, we listen to them. A lot of people we we um, uh, put online or we we put in part of our agenda to do business with them. But you know, you have to come and you have to go and you really get the business. It's not going to come to you. You really have to go out and get it. So my advice would for the small small to medium business is to go out there and you know employ some salespeople, people to go and market their product, their market their service. That's the only way to make it work. If you're using the services and supplies from within the country, it generates that has an off spiel to it as well. You know, if you look at one of our staff members, they feed between seven to ten people from their salary. So if you can employ a lot more people and have a lot more people employed in that country, and then it also it causes um, employment, it causes the money to, to stay within the country, to circulate within the country, and the country has to change, you know, it has to change because it has to supply products, it has to be able to supply different products and different needs, and different um, services, like cement factory has a, a different requirements, hotels have different requirements, restaurants have different requirements of what are needed from that country, so that can help with the um, industrialization of that particular country. They have to make sure that there is a market for their products and that, they, that there is a reason why people need to buy their, their products, people want their products, people want to or particularly want their product over someone else's product. Um, if the mid-sized companies have to import products, it can take a long time. Okay. If they have to import products, uh -huh. say if you're buying of a company, a local company, towels. If they have to import the towels from India, China, because they're not if they're not manufactured here, then it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So if we order a, a if we order a, a towel, can take up to three months to be delivered, three to four months to be delivered, because a lot still there's a lot of products that are not made in in Tanzania. You know, one country can't produce everything in the world. So there's um, if they have to rely on products from other countries, it can take a long time. They have to have a, a warehouse with stock already available. They have to look at process where they can speed it up, speed up the delivery oh, of oh, products. Stock? Stocks. Okay. If you take napkins, restaurant napkins, you know, we would order maybe per, per month uh, 300 napkins per month. So we need a, a regular supplier who can supply us with high quality cotton napkins. We can encourage the mid-sized companies, as I said before, we buy a lot of our products from mid-sized companies um, and uh, we're here to support them, you know, whatever we can do to support them, what makes sense for us financially, then we'll do it. Because we see that as, as a big growth area, uh, mid-sized companies in, in the whole of Tanzania as, a, as growth, growth areas. We've got three hotels in uh, Tanzania and the third hotel will be opening early next year. So we're fairly, fairly committed. The hide's very committed here in this, um, in this, in this uh, country. Yeah. We look at the the top hundred mid-sized companies. They're they're going to be the companies, the Tanzanian companies of the future. So um, we have to work with them. We have to see opportunities how we can support them and how they can support us as well. I think the government re knows the importance of these mid-sized companies and has already put a few things into place um, for them. I'm not an expert on that area, so I don't like to comment on it, but what I can see, that's their, one of their goals, is to get their, their mid-sized companies up and running and to make them successful. The business environment is, is tough right now, as, as we've said. It's tough, but there's, there's, there is opportunities there, especially for mid-sized companies, because they don't have big overheads, um, is moving to, as I said, moving to areas where what are booming now. The DOM is booming, you know. They should, everybody should be looking at that, opportunities there. To, um, to supply, build, etc., and infrastructure. Or Zanzibar, where it's all service industry as far as hospitality goes, tours, what they can provide for uh, the tourists who are coming in there. The country is, is doing well. Um, it's progressing. You know, that's, the whole of Africa is, is stagnating. The whole world is stagnating right now. So, um, but I think it's, it's, doing, it's doing well. And there's a couple of, as I said, there's a couple of boom areas. Tourism is really doing really well. Um, and also with Adolma happening, also it's also generating work. It's generating air opportunities for people to, um, to work with the new government, the government setting up business there.
We remain num number one because we spend money back onto the hotel. We have uh, 261 full-time employees currently. 261 full-time employees um, with our company currently now. We're a 182-room um, hotel. And Zanzibar is uh, Zanzibar also a very, very successful hotel, Apakai. 67 rooms in that hotel, 160 staff. Zanzibar is 67 rooms. And Arusa, we're opening um, early next year, will be um, 180, yeah, 180 rooms. We'll finish about 70% occupancy for, for the year, um, which is about 5% less than last year. We're doing well, we're doing better than all the other hotels. The other hotels are really good hotels in, in, in Dar es Salaam, they have their own niche market. But we're lucky because we cater for a, a wide range and uh, all our hotel, our hotel has just been completely renovated. So we've got a, nearly a brand new hotel. We cater for the top end businessmen to the leisure market here as well.